Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. And today I want to tell you the number one mistake you want to avoid when building your characters for the new Emblem of Severed Fate set. Building for maximum damage bonus on this artifact set is a trap. Well, kind of. There are some exceptions when you want to build extra energy recharge, and I'll go into that in a little bit. We generally want to avoid building energy recharge on both our weapon and our sands piece because that damage bonus is not going to beat the damage output if we just stuck to a attack percent sans piece. A lot of the characters that want to run this set are currently using energy recharge for their weapon, like the sacrificial weapons or the Favonius weapons or the prototype star glitter and some of the Inazuma weapons. If you build your characters for both energy recharge on the weapon and energy recharge on your artifact sans piece, you're going to be doing less damage. And here is the math and proof for that. However, damage is not everything. The main goal we want to achieve when building for this artifact set is to be able to do good damage as well as have enough energy recharge so that we can pop our burst basically off of cooldown. And even if it turns out that we deal more damage on our elemental burst with a different build, if you can't cast your burst as often, then in the long run you're just going to be doing less damage. So sometimes sacrificing some damage for more energy recharge is valuable. So this means there are some cases where you might want to run an energy recharge weapon and an energy recharge artifact piece. But as a general rule of thumb, you'll want to build energy recharge on your weapon and attack on your artifact piece or vice versa. And that's the beauty of this artifact set is because it gives us a lot of options. This allows you to build the Emblem of Severed Fate without wasting too many resources, depending on which weapons you have leveled up for your account. If you are running a burst support DPS character before using a two-piece elemental and two-piece noblesse, this is definitely the new four-piece set bonus you want to farm for that character. And the great thing about this set is that you can share it among any character, unlike the noblesse set because it needs the matching two-piece elemental damage bonus. The only positive I see to running this set is that the 15% elemental damage bonus applies to your elemental skills as well. The four-piece severed fate set, however, is going to give you a little bit more damage bonus on your elemental burst, while sacrificing that 15% elemental damage bonus on your E skills. We'll generally want to be shooting for 160 to 180% energy recharge on these characters. You can play around with these numbers depending on your team comp. For example, if you're running double elements, you might not need as much energy. And with about 180% energy recharge, we are giving our elemental burst a 45% damage bonus increase. So hopefully this gives you a ballpark comparison of how much damage bonus you'll get with 160 60 to 180% energy recharge. Here is the math and the proof to support what I'm saying. First with Xing Chu, if you run attack percent versus energy recharge sands and you're running a sack sword, your rain swords are going to be dealing about 16-ish percent less damage than if you ran attack percent versus energy recharge. And then your E skill suffers quite a big hit, dealing about 22% less damage. And then severed fate versus no bless plus a 15% elemental damage bonus two-piece set, we can see that our elemental burst damage is basically almost the same, but our E skill suffers a little bit in damage with the Severed Fate set, which is expected because the two-piece set that gives us elemental damage bonus is also boosting the damage of our E skills. But the extra energy recharge from the two-piece set bonus of the Severed Fate is more valuable because our elemental bursts not only provide damage, but also utility. And then when it comes to Shangling, it's the same story as the Xing Chu charts. When we run energy recharge instead of attack percent, we are dealing less damage. But again, remember that with Shangling, since she doesn't gain all of her elemental particles at once, running double energy recharge can be valuable. She loses about 19 to 20 percent damage on her elemental burst and 25 percent damage on her goba. And with the star glitter and attack percent, you're hitting about 165 energy recharge, whereas if you run double energy recharge, you're hitting about 217 percent energy recharge. The 165 is a little bit low for Shang Ling, so you might be struggling to generate enough energy for her Pyro NATO. But if you want to value damage numbers over frequency of casting your elemental burst, then by all means run attack percent instead of energy recharge. But with Shang Ling, if you want to run the Dragon's Bane, then you can see the damage difference here. Our elemental burst damage is about a 18 to 19 percent damage difference between running attack percent and energy recharge, and our Golba is about 24 to 25 percent. 
5%. If you don't run Energy Recharge Sands piece with the Dragon Spain, you're only going to be sitting at about 120% without substats, obviously, and 171.8 if you run Energy Recharge on your Sands piece. 20% damage difference is definitely worth it to build Energy Recharge on your Sands piece here. And the new Inazuma weapon, the Katane Cross Spear, is basically the same thing. About a 19% damage difference between the Elemental Burst damage and 25 with Goba, but the Katane Cross Spear has a passive that will give you a little bit of extra energy whenever you cast your elemental skill. You might want to be a little bit careful with this weapon though because you drain 3 energy when you cast your E skill, so if you have your burst already up when you swap into Shangling, and if you pop your E skill, you're going to have to wait for her to grab an elemental particle before you can pop your burst. In terms of damage with this weapon, the Katane Cross Spear does ever so slightly more damage. The decision you have to make here is to look at your team comp and if you're running a team comp that allows you to utilize the damage bonus from the Dragon's Bane, go with the Dragon's Bane and if you value that extra energy recharge from the passive of the Katane Cross Spear, then go with the Cross Spear. And since this is Strong Ling, we should take a look at Vaporize damage really quick and you'll see that our damage difference between attack percent and energy recharge stays pretty much the same. Here is the Vaporize damage for a Star Glitter running attack percent and the damage is really close between the Katane Cross Spear running Energy Recharge Artifact piece, but the Dragon's Bane wins out a little bit when it runs Energy Recharge. But of course you need that extra damage bonus by hitting an enemy that is affected by either Pyro or Hydro. So I hope you're starting to see the beauty of this artifact set because all of these builds are pretty much almost identical, as long as we are correctly building energy recharge or attack percent depending on the weapon. And then you'll see with Beto, the story is basically the same. Running attack percent over energy recharge is going to give you more damage, but just make sure that you have enough energy recharge so that you can comfortably use your elemental burst off of cooldown or nearly off of cooldown. So looking at the prototype archaic if you don't run any energy recharge and just basic attack percent you'll have 120 percent energy recharge without any subsets and you'll definitely be doing more damage about 15 to 16 percent more damage on your bursts and 22 percent more damage on your e-skill so you're gonna have to choose between 120 percent energy recharge or 171.8 percent energy recharge and definitely in my opinion running energy recharge with attack percent on the weapon is definitely the way to go you should run energy recharge on either the weapon or the artifact piece, since her elemental particles come right as she uses her E skill, unlike Shang Ling, but very similarly to Xing Chu. With the Sacrificial Greatsword, running attack percent gives you a 19% damage difference compared to running double energy recharge, but the Sacrificial Greatsword doesn't have as much energy recharge on its subset as some of the other weapons. We're only going to be sitting at 150.6% energy recharge, but but if you get that reset, you're going to be generating double the amount of particles, which makes up for that. But at that point, you're kind of relying on chance. If you run double energy recharge here, you lose about 20% damage, but your energy recharge is at 200%. Favonius Greatsword is similar, but you're at 180 because its secondary energy recharge stat is much higher. So I would probably run attack percent if you were going to go with Favonius Greatsword. 180 should be enough coupled with its passive skill as well. And with the new Inazuman weapon, it has energy recharge on its subset as well, giving us 165 if we run attack percent and 217 if we run energy recharge. Since the passive skill also just gives us extra energy, I would run attack percent with this weapon. The only time where we would run double energy recharge with Beidou is if we don't trust the RNG with the Sacrificial Greatsword. And here I ordered it by damage. And you'll see that the Sacrificial Greatsword with attack percent does the most damage and the Inazuman Claymore does the least damage. But on the flip side, it actually also gets ordered by reverse energy recharge. Sacrificial Greatsword and attack percent has the lowest energy recharge and the Inazuman weapon with Sans energy recharge has the highest. I thought that this was kind of interesting, but I hope that this helps you make a choice. Do you want to go in the middle of the pack with a prototype archaic and energy recharge? Or do you want to put your faith into RNG with the sacrificial greatsword? Or do you want to focus on energy recharge and you don't really mind the damage loss? Also remember with the sacrificial greatsword, and especially with Beidou, if you aren't hitting your full counters, you aren't going to be getting as much energy. That's all I got for you guys in this video today. If you liked what you saw, then leave a like, leave a comment down below, and 
and maybe even consider subscribing to my channel. Until next time, I will see you guys later.